we have a set of three pictures. It's all about being able to see things before you install them. So we're going to do this little exercise with three pictures where we're showing you a tub. Everybody needs one of these tubs in their bathrooms. It seems to be the in thing. If you don't have one, you're like not hip. Most people won't fill that up with hot water because it's just using too much hot water and too much energy. But for you as a plumber, you look at that tub completely different than anybody else. You're not looking at it from the point of water conservation. You are looking at it from the point of somebody purchases that and you're going to install it. You're looking at that right now in a bedroom off of a master bathroom. Um, and to you right now, it looks just like a picture. Doesn't mean anything to you. But sooner rather than later, you're going to need to look at that and go, oh, what size is a water heater? Can I fill that with hot water if I have to? Or are we going to run out of hot water? Where's the flood level rim? You look at plumbing fixtures, you don't look at a plumbing fixture and just go, wow, that's a big tub. No, you're going to be much more professional than that because you got to look at that tub and be able to start to identify key pieces. So there's a big tub going into a master bathroom. We're going to slide that tub into a master bath and show you a couple things that a licensed plumber made mistakes. But people like me, people like you, need to be able to notice the things that are wrong as soon as it happens. So seeing before installing everything, you have to see it all in your head before it actually happens. And this plumber somehow got his license, didn't go to school here, but somehow got his license and didn't recognize the problems that ended up costing him a lot of money. Next. Observe the vent for the tub. You need to have situational awareness of what is going on. You need to know this stuff as soon as you can get it and cram it into your heads. Does anybody know how high is that windowsill usually off the floor? What is the minimum height of a windowsill off the floor? Brian Dubois? Three to four feet. So three feet is too low. So if I said to you, Brian, if you said three feet, and this is for all of you, if you have a window that's less than 42 inches above the floor, all the glass has to be tempered, just like your sliding doors. You have to assume that somebody potentially can walk through the window or trip through the window. Therefore, the glass has to be tempered. That's a huge construction piece when you're a plumber and you're trying to observe and you're trying to see before installing. All these windows were pretty low. All of these windows needed tempered glass because they were that low. There's the tub. There's the flood level rim of the tub. There's the vent for the tub. There's the drain for the tub. There's the hot water for the tub. There's the cold water for the tub. There's a portion of a laminated beam. And what basically this is going to come down to is the plumber not realizing that he, in this case, wasn't really aware of what he was doing appropriately. What has happened? Because you're going to see in the next slide, the flood level rim of the tub is up here. Here's the vent for the tub. What has happened? Somebody's going to fill that tub up with water. That tub is going to be filled up to here, pretty close to the top. As soon as somebody pulls that plug, water is going to seek its own level really, really quickly. So you pull the drain on that tub. It's depending on whether we have the right pitch, whether or not the drain got plugged up over time. That water is going to seek its own level, and it's going to start filling up that vent with hair, with soap scum, with dirt, if somebody got in there and they were a mess. Somebody said we had to raise the window. Nope, you don't have to raise the window. But there's your flood level rim. Here's the tub and kind of the ghost image moving over. You can see the vent below the flood level rim, pass or fail. Absolutely, for those of you who immediately had your thumbs down, that was a fail. This was a rough inspection. 
no excuses not to talk to somebody, no excuses not to like use other resources to go, hey, you know what? Can I do this? Can I not do that? These are things you need to be very, very much aware of. Every fixture has a flood level rim. That vent needed to be six inches above the flood level rim. Was there a whole bunch of things that needed to happen that didn't? Yep, there needed to be some communication with the builder. There needed to be some agreements and some proposals. Why have a code if you're going to violate it? Well, I couldn't do anything with it. The wood was in the way. That's the last thing the inspector wants to hear. All an inspector wants to do when they go to a house, they want to know that you were well informed, you went to a school, you worked with people for four or five years that understood and showed you the right way. So that when, when and if you do pass a journeyman plumber's exam, you don't waste the inspector's time and it doesn't cost you a ton of money because you are crystal clear on what you are doing. You have to be on your game. You have to know the playbook, which is your code book. You have to ask the questions and you need to be able to recognize this at the drop of a hat. And you'll continually be doing that, getting better and better and better because you're never ever gonna stop learning.